Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Monday the 27th of February 2017 and we are covering the third part of our interview with Greg where we are discussing the topics of China and a gold-backed currency. We hope you enjoy it. So let's discuss China. Is it going to be the number one superpower in the world, both economically and potentially militarily? How do you think the Trump presidency's uh, courtship of uh, Taiwan is going to affect China? Because there have been some threats there. Uh, and thirdly, can the Western world survive with a or an embargo on Chinese products or some form of tariff placed on them, which President Trump has threatened. Three interesting areas for you. So I'll start with the fourth. <laughs> <laughs> Just to confuse the issue, I think that the biggest single problem that the United States will find with China is a singular lack of ability mm -hmm. to empathise with either their requirements, their honour code, their modus operandi, or their aims. Mm -hmm. America, like most Western world countries, tends to have economic plans that stretch way into the middle of next week, whereas China tends to have economic plans that are looking at the next hundred years. Right. Also, I don't believe with the poverty so heavily concealed in America, mm -hmm. there is any understanding of the sub-economic living standards of the vast majority of the Chinese peoples. America cannot come to terms with its own poverty. Therefore, I think it will have difficulty understanding poverty that means people kill babies because they just plain can't afford them. Mm. Mm. You are looking at a very, very different culture. It is likening what America would claim was its concept of honour mm -hmm. with Japan's concept of Bushido. And China has, since the beginning of time, looked on the Japanese people and called them the offshore monkeys. Right, right. But coming back, despite that poverty, there is no doubt that China, at the moment, is the second largest economy in the world. It is, apart from India, it is probably going to have the largest uh, growth rate this year, uh, some forecasting between 6 and 7, or maybe slightly more in some cases, percent. So, is it going to be our masters in the future, do you think? Our economic masters? It's going to eventually be a Sino world, and I don't think there's much doubt of that. What does that mean exactly? Um... Look around any big city and there is a very large hidden Chinese population. Mm -hmm. That's point one. Point two, they do not have the concepts that we have of looking after each other. They have an ancestor cult. Mm -hmm where ancestors are more important 
than it would seem than descendants and to try to compare Britain, America, Canada or what we see as the civilised world with the Eastern world is utterly specious. Nevertheless, China is one of the largest importers of gold, as well as one of the larger, not the largest, but larger miners of gold. Now, many of our listeners frequently ask the question, and as do we, of all the economists that we consult with, is China, through its economic prowess, going to dominate the economic infrastructure of the world and potentially convert what is currently fiat currency into some form of gold back currency system. And if it does, what does that actually mean for the everyday man and woman in the street, as it were? We have not so long in the past witnessed the abject fear of the American and Western world's reaction to the possibility of a gold-based currency being launched by Muammar Gaddafi. Right. Yes. That is as nothing to the potential China offers. China already has strong relationships mm -hmm. with a number of countries that we classify as allies. It has strong relationships with Britain. It's about to build a massive power station in Britain. has huge investments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It has huge investments in various European projects way beyond the investments that America has contemplated. And something that is conveniently overlooked is the massive amount of investment China has in the United States of America already. Indeed, indeed. So are you saying, perhaps, then, that China may actually succeed in converting into a go-back currency system and that America or the West will not be able to do to China what it has succeeded to do with Libya? I don't think there is a prayer of doing to China what we did to Libya. Mm -hmm. um, we would destroy ourselves in so doing it. Right. So you could potentially then see one day a gold back or precious metal back system of currency? I think that there is every possibility. Mm -hmm. However, I don't believe there is the probability. The holdings will be held in massive quantities mm -hmm. by China, mm -hmm. but it will not, I believe, bother converting to gold backing. At the moment, its currency is backed by the might of China. Greg, let me give you a, a, a hypothesis or an interesting scenario. One of the criticisms, and also at the same time one of the advantages of having a gold back currency, is that you can really only expand that currency at the rate at which the gold is dug out of the soil. So basically, you can have a 2, 3 or 4% increase in the amount of currency available if it is backed 100% May I interrupt? By gold. May I interrupt? Yes. yes. I don't think that is true. I think that is conventional wisdom. Go on. One of the aspects of setting the price of gold is the speed at which it's dug out of the soil. Mm -hmm. No one ever talks of the speed at which it gets buried in a bank vault. <laughs> and if you as a currency 
concept decide to buy massive quantities of gold yes as china has done yes and you bury it in your bank vaults mm -hmm. that starves the world market mm -hmm. of gold right thereby pushing the price up mm -hmm. which means that the gold in the chinese bank vault mm -hmm. constantly rises potentially exponentially in a manner in which it can buy the rest unless of course until of course it then releases that gold onto the market and normal supply and demand economics then says there will be a glut and the gold price will go back down we're talking of a country here that has taken a long-term overview. Right. Don't forget that when Ma Zedong conquered China in the revolution, mm -hmm. Chiang Kai-shek took off with some speed, but not just with some speed, with great alacrity, with China's piggy bank under his arm, and went to Taiwan yes. with effectively China's equivalent of the Federal Reserve mm -hmm. and Fort Knox. Right. Ma Zedong was about to follow him to take it back, but Chiang Kai-shek was one step ahead of that game, and he invested that money I believe, through Barclays, DCO and Chase, mm -hmm. mostly in the American economy, where it became known as the wanter money. Now, I shall leave you to research that. Right. And <laughs> that money was put on long-term deposit in America and... I understand that there has been a slight snafu with this because the money fell due, but it was found that certain individuals in the banking world had had their um, fist in the cookie jar. I see. And there is a shortfall, and America can't actually pay it back, which I believe has some bearing on the amount of bonds... China is able to buy from America. So, it is also interesting to note that China not only has the largest container ship in the world, which sails across to West Coast America, dumps all its goods and goes home empty, there to fill up again with Chinese goods, that are steadily improving in quality. But there is also the interesting fact that China would appear to control the Panama Can Canal and has widened the Panama Canal so that it can push a similar boat through to deliver to the east coast of America on a regular basis and on towards Europe. Do you see the Western world making such long-term plans? No. Generally, you know, as well as we do, if you look at companies, generally they're looking at one, three, five, maybe, maybe, certainly perhaps chemical companies will look 10 to 20 years ahead. But that, that's essentially the maximum. I think probably the pharmaceutical companies are the ones yes. looking the furthest ahead these days because... Yes. Even if we look at um, people like Schlumberger, yes. who do most of the international um, prospecting for new oil and geological work, um, and do it for corporations like Exxon, BP, Shell, etc., mm -hmm. mm -hmm. there is a great deal of doubt about the future of oil. Not that we will run out of it, because I personally don't believe we'll ever run out of oil. I am um, of the opinion that it is more or less fully regenerable and there's hardly anywhere on the planet, it seems, that if you don't drill a hole 
to the right depth, you fa won't fail to find oil. Wow. Wow. We also have um, the massive deposits that are believed to exist under Gull Island, mm -hmm. uh, off of the coast of Alaska, where they it has been claimed that drilling in one direction, they hit a reserve that exceeded the original oil fields of Saudi. So they drilled in the other direction and found another one. <laughs> so, so <laughs> on that basis, then, why is oil going up? Because if that is the case, then we should be seeing $10 oil and not $40, $50, $60 oil, shouldn't we? I think part of the reason is that within a foreseeable, almost, period of time, you won't be able to give oil away. So you're not an advocate for investing in oil, then? Uh, I wouldn't suggest anyone invested in oil. Interesting. Because at any moment... The new technology yes. in batteries yes. and solar power. We yes. already have um, hard to trace rumours of the energy source Psi, mm -hmm. uh, but there are those rumours are very well established. Um, we hear that some of the prominent investors in oil, including Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. are investing heavily out of oil. Understand. And I don't know who may have come across Psy. I don't understand it myself. I'm not a scientist. However, I understand it um, in its crudest form is a matter of taking silicon sand and superheating it and blasting it with argon mm -hmm. to produce uh effectively two-inch square bars of specialist glass mm -hmm. and then um, welding on an alloy of aluminium of some sort onto one end of the bar, cutting a sliver off the bar little more than microns thick to produce a two-inch square solar panel that you can plug straight into AC uh, that is somewhere in the region of a thousand times more efficient than the current solar panels available. So there is the possibility mm -hmm. that some see as probability, but I'm sorry I'm not well enough to have informed to advise on this, that with the new batteries... Uh, that will be coming when you buy a new car, you will have two of these little cells in your, the roof of your car and you will never have to put fuel in that car again. Well, you mentioned solar panels. Now, one of the great excitements that silver bugs, which we include ourselves in this, to be frank, mm. people who believe that long-term silver has a very, very attractive future, we believe that solar panels is going to be one of the major ways in which demand for silver is going to increase and thereby cause its prices to rise. Well, you also have to China. take into consideration that yes. if you're talking about silver, yes. the entertainment world, mm. where because they seem to have run out of plots of any description, yes. are now endlessly making werewolf movies <laughs> and many a silver bullet will be needed <laughs> well I, the last time I looked it was zombies but I, I take your point fully there I take your point well personally <laughs> I don't look often <laughs> you're so, going to have to stay away stay from away. your mirror yeah <laughs> absolutely absolutely so are you suggesting perhaps that something like Psy or its equivalent could actually prevent silver from being the panacea for 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 industrial for the new industrial age, if you like. Because it's also used in medicines, remember, and in in other forms of 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 processes, which in the past has been recognised, but not perhaps developed sufficiently. You're asking me to play with crystal balls here. Mm. My grandparents 
who were born in the Victorian era. Yes, I am that old. Um, and you can take that smirk off your face. <laughs> <laughs> they were born into homes where the only lighting was paraffin. Mm -hmm. Many people in the Midwest of America, right the way through into the 30s, although oil had been found, yes. were only able to light their soddies mm -hmm. with paraffin. Mm -hmm. Now, the portable telephone device that you are using to record this contains more computing power mm -hmm. than was available to NASA when they landed m man on the moon. Indeed. Or in District 5, I'm not sure which. <laughs> um, to pander to the conspiracy theorists. Right. Um, but to predict what is coming mm. is foolish in the extreme mm -hmm. when we're talking of this sort of thing. Yes, I can see a complete wipeout of the technologies that we consider so ultimately fantastic right. by the simple development of one small change. For example, if what I have read on Psi is correct, mm -hmm. and batteries progress at the same speed, mm -hmm. it will so dramatically alter the way of life on this planet as to destabilise almost all forms of investment other than a bow and arrow. <laughs> When we put these videos together, the plan was originally to have just three. However, in view of the length of the video and the additional subjects that we wanted covered, it has been decided to extend the series to five videos. So video four, which we shall publish tomorrow, will actually cover the issue of silver, copper, the US dollar, the debt clock, and gold. We hope you enjoy it. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative, and if so, please give it a thumb up and share it on Twitter. Also, kindly visit our website at IlluminatiSilver.com, and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe as a free member for regular email updates and offers. Our Facebook page, which is updated daily, can be found at facebook.com forward slash Illuminati Silver. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its own.